Hola, ¿cómo estás? Espero que estés súper bien. This is Tamara Marie, host of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Now, before we jump into this episode, I wanted to let you know about a special opportunity that you're definitely going to want to take advantage of, especially if your goal is to become fluent in Spanish. For a limited time only, my team is opening the doors to listeners of the podcast to take advantage of a free language coaching session. Now, in this session, it's not just we're teaching you about verbs or grammar, but we're really going to do a deep dive into what are your goals for learning Spanish, assess where you are on your journey to fluency at the moment, and help you map out a 90-day plan for how you can get to fluency. So we are going to help you take your Spanish to the next level, whether you're afraid of speaking Spanish or you just get a little bit nervous when you're talking to native speakers, or maybe you've got some of the basics down, but you really know that you struggle with getting your Spanish to flow and your listening skills aren't up to par. Whatever it is, even if it is a specific grammar issue, we will help you map out how to tackle that. And normally these sessions do cost, so we are offering a few slots for free. There are limited spaces available and they'll only be open up through the end of the month. So make sure you sign up. Go to SpanishConSalsa.com slash coach. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash coach to book your free language coaching session where we will help you map out a 90-day plan to get to Spanish fluency. Okay, let's get started with the episode. Just imagine that you're sitting on one of the most beautiful, sought-after, hidden beaches in the Caribbean. You're sipping on a cerveza, enjoying the waves and the breeze from the ocean. A friend turns to you and says, Pásame la vestida de novia. And you have no idea what he's talking about. You look puzzled and you ask him to repeat. You hear it again. Pásame la vestida de novia. But you still don't get it. Now, you've been learning Spanish for a year, and you thought you were ready for your vacation in the Dominican Republic. But it looks like you may have missed a thing or two. In this episode of the podcast, we'll help you prevent this very situation from ever happening to you. Let's get you prepared for your next vacation well in advance by helping you understand one of the most difficult dialects of Spanish. Así que vamos a empezar. Let's get started. Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Marie. Hola y bienvenidos al episodio 83. Welcome to episode 83 of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Now, I hope the situation that we mentioned in the intro never happens to you. And in case you're wondering, pásame la vestida de novia actually means pass me a beer. Now, I can't really get into the details of vestida de novia right now and exactly what that means, uh, but it is a phrase very commonly used in República Dominicana or the Dominican Republic, or DR for short. So as you know, Dominican Republic is located in the Caribbean. Uh, It's a nation that actually shares an island with the nation of Haiti, and they speak Spanish in Dominican Republic. And the Spanish that's spoken there day to day, more colloquially, is a lot different than the academic type of Spanish that you may have learned in a course or in your Spanish classes. So in order to help you understand this very, very common and popular dialect of Spanish, which can also be one of the most difficult dialects to understand because Dominican Spanish speakers are known for speaking very fast. They also cut off a lot of words. And as you heard in our intro, they also have some very unique vocabulary that you just won't hear anywhere else. Now, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you're well aware that we have covered a few episodes on Dominican Spanish before with our coach, Kesia Sosa, uh, who works on our Spanish Consalsa team. 
And we have actually gotten together to launch a brand new project that we hope will help you understand even more conversational Spanish as it's spoken in the Dominican Republic. So as I mentioned last week on the podcast, I had a big announcement for today. So here it is. Drum roll, please. Okay, no drum roll, but <laughs> here's the announcement. On August 1st, we will be launching the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast. So I'm very excited. We've been working on this project for some time and the first season will be available on August 1st. And our goal is to teach you in a conversational way, even more Dominican Spanish. So we'll talk about greetings. We'll talk about some common words that you'll hear when you're hanging out with friends. Very, very informal Spanish that you can use if you're planning a trip to DR or if you just have Spanish speakers from the Dominican Republic and your community. So if you're in the United States and you're anywhere in the Northeast, like New York, New Jersey, uh, even parts of Maryland, Washington, D.C., there are pretty large populations of Spanish speakers from the Dominican Republic um, and then also uh, Florida. So Florida is known, uh, especially in the Miami area, for having a very large population from Cuba. However, there are also pretty large populations of Spanish speakers from both Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic, uh, located in Central Florida, so maybe more around the Orlando area as well. Uh, there are also Spanish speakers that are from not just Cuba, but also Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. So this is very useful, even if you're not planning on traveling and you just want to be able to get to know the Spanish speakers that are in your community. It's very, very important to understand a little bit more about where they come from uh, and what's different about the Spanish spoken uh, in their countries. Okay, so uh, we hope that this podcast will help you uh, be able to understand even better some of those things that may be unique to Dominican Spanish that you may have heard before and completely not understood. All right. So I'm going to share in this episode of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast, the opening episode from season one of Dominican Spanish 101. Now, you can also subscribe to the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast if you have a specific interest or if you just want to challenge yourself to learn more Spanish because I guarantee you, if you're able to understand the Dominican Spanish dialect, every other dialect will be a lot easier because they tend to speak a little bit slower <laughs> than Spanish speakers from the Caribbean in general. So I recommend that you check out the podcast uh, and hopefully Dominican Republic is on your travel bucket list. Uh, so this will help you prepare well in advance uh, as well if you do plan on traveling to Dominican Republic in the future. So in the description of this episode, I will have a link for you to subscribe to the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast. You can also go to our show notes page at learnspanishconsalsa.com slash 83. And I'll also include the link there so that you can subscribe directly to Dominican Spanish 101 and get notified every time we release a new episode. So I hope you enjoy this new podcast, Dominican Spanish 101, and make sure you listen to the end because I will, at the end of the episode, be talking about a little giveaway that we're doing for the podcast launch on August 1st. So if you're interested in checking that out, make sure you stay around to the end and you'll hear more about the giveaway. All right, vamos a empezar con Dominican Spanish 101. Welcome to the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast. We will be exploring the unique culture and expressions of the beautiful island in the Caribbean of the Dominican Republic. So this is how this is going to work. Each episode, I'm going to give you a few words and phrases and expressions that you can use when you talk to your friends that are from Dominican Republic or hopefully on your next trip there once we all return back to normal. Because if you're listening to this <laughs> in year 2020, when we're just starting out with this, we are right now still in the middle of quarantine, but I am hoping that by the time you hear this, we will be far past that phase and you will be planning your next trip to Santo Domingo. So just like before, if you've listened to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast, you are familiar with our, one of our wonderful coaches and a repeat guest on our podcast there. Uh, her name is 
Kesia Sosa. She works with our students in our Learn Spanish with Music course and our Spanish Con Salsa membership. Uh, and she is from República Dominicana. So she is going to share with us some expressions throughout this uh, podcast series. And we will learn more and more about how Spanish is spoken in Dominican Republic because as I'm sure you know by now, if you've listened to this podcast, if you clicked on this episode, you already know that there's something just a little bit different about the way that Dominicans speak Spanish. So I have Kesia here and she's going to help us break it all down. Hola, Kesia. Hola, Tamara. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, estoy muy bien aquí en casa, tranquila. Entonces, Kesia, vamos a hablar un poquito sobre español dominicano. Entonces, hoy vamos a hablar sobre greetings in uh, Dominican Spanish. So, just like I just said hi to Kesia there, we, we did a pretty standard greeting, right? Hola, como estas? Muy bien. Yep. <laughs> right? If you go to Dominican Republic or if you talk to some of your friends from the DR, it might not sound that way. So, I know I found this out firsthand my first time. Actually, no, it was my second time in Dominican Republic. I was in Santo Domingo. And when I got off the plane, there was a greeting that I had never heard before. And I was so <laughs> confused. So I thought I would have Cassie on. The first thing I wanted her to explain um, and to share with us is how do greetings sound in Dominican Republic? Because we all know what we learn in school and in all these Spanish courses when you say, Hola, ¿cómo está usted? Like, nobody talks like that, nobody. especially not in DR. <laughs> so, Kesia, what could you share with us? So, if I was to get off the plane in Santo Domingo right now, um, and I was to see a friend, how would they greet me? I know they wouldn't say, hola, ¿cómo estás? What would they say? If they would say that, it would sound like, hey, Tamara, ¿cómo tú estás? <laughs> So instead of making it formal, we will cut those words like como tú ta, right? And it will sound like a different language, of course, but it's basically asking the same. And if it's your friend who's welcoming you, it will say, hey, Tamara, que lo que, cuéntame, you know? It's a very common, uh, and you will even hear grandpas saying que lo que. <laughs> So, and so, all right, so let's break that down a little bit. So the first one, como tu eta, right? It's like, you're really cutting off like the E and the S, right? Yeah. In, in that. So it's really like, como tu estas, right? But mm -hmm. nobody is going to say it that way. When you hear it, it's going to sound like, como tu ta, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can even make that shorter. You can even make that shorter and say, como ta. Hey, como ta. Now I know why people are confused when they go to DR. They're like, what are they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's so many words missing. What is happening right now? Okay. So, ¿cómo está? Yeah. ¿Cómo está? Está bien. Está bien. Está bien. So, está bien becomes está bien. Está bien. Yeah. And, and, bien. and it's a question also, you know, like, está bien. Tú está bien. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, tú está bien. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'm working on my Dominican accent right now, too. Because <laughs> I don't you know. <laughs> Although it's funny. I have to tell you this, Cassia, because when I travel, people tend to think that my accent is from the Caribbean somewhere when I speak Spanish. So I was in Colombia mm -hmm. and this guy told me, he said, um, de donde eres? I said, I soy de Estados Unidos. He said, no, tu tienes un acento que una mezcla de dominicano, cubano y puertorriqueño. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how did I do that? <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's pretty funny, but I, I think because I have some of those habits because I learned Spanish, but, you know, music from DR and from Puerto Rico and from Cuba. So I think I have some of those habits of cutting off some of the S's and things like that, too. So probably <laughs> the influence is strong. <laughs> OK, so so we covered sort of how you would say, like, um, what's up? So the second well, no, I think it was the third one you said was interesting. So when you say like, que lo que, mm -hmm. right, so that's. I think that's like the most quintessential like Dominican greeting. Like if you hear someone say que lo que, mm -hmm. then you know that they're nine times out of 10 from DR, right? Yes. <laughs> and then when texting, like if you get a text, like it's just literally the letters K, L, and K. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though when you spell it out, it's like K, Q, U, E, right? How we say it in English. But uh, it is funny, like when I first heard that, and that is the greeting I heard when I got off the plane in Santo Domingo. And I was like, trying to translate it in my head like what that witch what <laughs> <laughs> I was like what is he asking me I was so confused but now you know you know if you hear that que lo que it's just a way of saying like what's up right yep mm -hmm. 
And so what are what are some of the common responses? Because this is something else. Like, so if someone says that to to you, right? And, and they say to you, I guess, yeah, que lo que. Like, what are some common responses? Because I think another thing that gets us, you know, Spanish learners hung up is like, if you go somewhere and someone says something to you, even if you understand it, you go, okay, they're just saying what's up to me. You don't really know how to respond or you only know how to respond in a very formal way. Like saying, oh, estoy bien, gracias, y, y tú, right? Mm -hmm. So what would what would someone be able to say like realistically uh, or that would sound more natural in a conversation to respond if someone says like, que lo que? Well, it depends on actually what's going on. But yes, if you answer like, estoy bien or no estoy bien, that will take the fun out of que lo que. <laughs> That will kill the, the conversation right there. So you probably want to say something like tranqui and is the short for tranquila. And we use that just to say that we are relaxed, that we are nice, that we are okay. You know, so if somebody say, hey, que si que lo que, and then I reply, ah, oh, aquí tranqui, tranqui, tranquila. You know? Or we also use the expression chévere. I don't know if you heard it before. Chevere means um, nice, like something nice. And so I can say, oh, tamo chevere, estoy chevere, todo chevere. Also, you could say um, an, an expression that especially young people use. They say, tamo cloro. It's for estamos. And then cloro, the actual word means bleach. Um, but it has nothing to do with bleach. It means that we are okay and that everything is perfectly clear and nice. You know, everything is perfect. So we will say, tamo cloro. That is hilarious. We are bleach. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I think too, it's also like the way you say things. I think the one thing I've noticed anyway, it's like there's, there's definitely a different rhythm to the way people from the islands in general speak. And I always tell people it's, it's similar to English, right? So if you were to learn English like in New York versus like the South, like you get a whole different accent. But in general, like when, when English speakers listen to Caribbean English speakers, like we already kind of know because they have like an accent like Jamaica and Trinidad, like they have very specific accents even when speaking English. So for me, it's similar listening to like uh, Caribbean dialects of Spanish because even like when you like respond, like no one's going to say ah, tranquilo or tranqui. It's like a tranquila. Yeah. <laughs> There's like a little, you got to like, you know, you got to flow into it. It's not like, you know, tranquilo. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> you have to like dance your way through it, you know? <laughs> that is actually the best way to describe it. Like people say like it kind of sounds like either like you're singing or like you're dancing with the words. Like you have the kind of flow with it or it just sounds very stuffy and you know it's like estoy bien todo bien tranquilo like no one talks like that either <laughs> no <laughs> so i think the whole thing is like you have to just relax in general i think i think it's funny in latin america in general and in the caribbean i think the culture is just more relaxed than most anglo kind of or english speaking culture so i think in general you just have to kind of chill out mm -hmm. in order to be able to speak without sounding super gringo right <laughs> Yeah, you, you have to enjoy yourself. And like you said, people is relaxed and, you know, I don't know if it's the heat or the weather, but everyone is ready just to have fun. Even if it's a formal meeting, you break the ice with a nice greeting like this, you know, just saying like, hello, tranquilo, todo chévere, todo bien, you know. And do you have any other greetings or expressions that you want to share or a way that people ask, like, how are you? And people respond or um, is that are those like the pretty, pretty much the basic ones that you'll hear in the DR? So there are others that we use a lot. Like we use the expression, dime, um, comes from the verb de si, right, to tell. So when I greet somebody, I will say, dime a ver. And that means like, tell me how you're doing. Dime a ver. Or... Dímelo, you know, like tell me anything. And it's a way of saying hello too. So it, especially if it's your friend, you wouldn't use that with somebody you're greeting for the first time that you've never seen. But if it's your friend, you're like, hey, Tamara, dímelo, dime a ver. Um, and some people even say, dímelo cantando, you know, like I only want to hear good, good greetings, good things. So dímelo cantando. But we use the expression, um, decir, dime, dímelo, um, to ask, how are you? How are you doing? 
Yeah, and that's similar to, I think, uh, Cuéntame, right? It's like... Exactly. Cuéntame. It's almost like, tell me a story. That's how I think of it. Like, Mm -hmm. when you say that to someone... So, as an English speaker, it sounds kind of weird, like, if you translate it literally. But I try to think of it like, you know, when you're seeing a friend, maybe you haven't seen them in in a few days... You're basically asking what's been happening with you. Tell me what's going on with you or mm-hmm. tell me like a story about what's happened with you recently. So if you're like, cuéntame, dime, it's like, tell me what's up. Tell me what's going mm-hmm. on. So that's how I think of it. There are a lot of like, again, less formal expressions. So if you want to really be able to communicate with folks without sounding so stuffy and formal and like you just walked out of a Spanish classroom, mm-hmm. <laughs> you might want to take down some of these expressions and practice them on your own as well. And are some of those, now all these expressions that you'll only hear in Dominican Republic or will you hear some of these in other places as well? Probably in the Caribbean, you could hear the um, dímelo or cuéntamelo. I think the que lo que is very Dominican. And and also the the answer is like tranqui or tranquilo. That's probably very Dominican, even though it's tranquilo is a word we use in common general Spanish, right? Okay, so did you have any other expressions to share? Well, there's one more that is in between formal and informal, and it's saludos, just saying saludos. Um, it, the translation for it is greetings, but we actually use it as a greeting. So if I get, um, it's, it's traditional here when you get on a public transportation, let's say I get in a bus, I have to say hello to everyone. And so I get in the bus and I say saludos. And that's just like saying hola or hello to everyone in the bus. Or if I get into the office, I say saludos. And that's me saying greetings to everyone. But it's actually using the word greetings. So it's in between formal and informal. Like you could use it in any situation. But it's a way of saying hello to everyone instead of going to each individual in a room or in a public transportation. Oh, yeah, that's very helpful, too. So I think the way I would look at that in English, it's like, um, like if I was like going to a family gathering, like you said, going to work, like I would say, how's everybody doing? Or if you say good morning or you're just kind of like generally greeting everyone, it's like, how are y'all doing? How's everybody? Mm -hmm. Like that kind of thing. So. All right. So could you review for us just as we close out? Because I know everyone's probably feverishly trying to write all these down. (laughs) But I will let you know at the end how you can um, get a transcript of this conversation and a list of all these uh, greetings that we've gone over today. But first, Kessie, if you could just review briefly uh, some of those greetings and responses uh, in Dominican Spanish. Okay, so we went through como tu ta, which is a short version for como tu estas. Que lo que, that means what's up. Um, also, dime or dímelo, um, cuéntamelo or cuéntame, you know, it's just asking people, tell me something new, what's up, what's new with you? Um, and then the answer is like when you reply tranqui or tranquilo or tamocloro, you know, it's just saying that everything is nice, chévere, everything's nice. And saludos, which is a nice way of saying greetings to everyone or in a group. Okay, so there you have it, your basic Dominican Spanish 101 greetings so that you know um, how to greet someone in Dominican Republic. Or more importantly, if you hear someone speaking from DR or they're talking directly to you and they say one of those things, especially que lo que, (laughs) then you will understand exactly what they're saying. So I hope you all have enjoyed this first episode of the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast. Uh, In our next episode, we will be getting more into some Dominican Spanish expressions. So we'll talk about some of those expressions and phrases that you might hear from your friends in Dominican Republic or when you visit the country yourself. So make sure that you subscribe to this podcast if this is your first time listening so that you can get updated every time we release a new episode. And of course, if you want to go further with learning more Dominican Spanish, you can sign up for the Dominican Spanish 101 course. There will be a free trial available for you to try out a few of the lessons. And if you want to book a one-on-one lesson with Kessia, you can uh, discuss all things Dominican Spanish. So just go to dominicanspanish101.com slash free trial. That's dominicanspanish101.com slash free trial. And you will be able to sign up for a preview of our Dominican Spanish 101 course and go deeper into some of the greetings and expressions that we talked about today and more and more Dominican Spanish. 
Okay, so that's it for our first episode. Thank you so much, Kessia, for sharing those greetings with us. And I hope it's uh, been helpful to everyone who's listening. I hope so, too. It was a pleasure and it was always fun. Thank you for listening to the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast. To get access to show notes for all episodes from season one, go to DominicanSpanish101.com and sign up for our Dominican Spanish audio course. Learn conversational Dominican Spanish from native Spanish speakers that live on the island. You'll learn from dialogues between native speakers, along with transcripts in both English and Spanish with vocabulary in context for review. You'll also get access to the show notes from every episode of season one of the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast. Go to DominicanSpanish101.com slash course and use discount code podcast to get 20% off the course during our launch week. That's DominicanSpanish101.com slash course. We're also giving away some great prizes during our launch week. If you'd like to be entered for a chance to win a free copy of our Dominican Spanish 101 phrase book, which includes over 200 uniquely Dominican words and phrases with examples in context plus audio, just leave us a rating and review on iTunes to help other people find our podcast and send a screenshot of your review to hola at dominicanspanish101.com. We will be giving away 10 free copies of the Dominican Spanish 101 phrase book during our launch week. So make sure you leave us a rating and review in iTunes and send us that screenshot to hola, H-O-L-A, at dominicanspanish101.com. And if you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button so that you'll be notified every time a new episode of Dominican Spanish 101 is available. In the next episode, Kessia and I will be sharing some uniquely Dominican Spanish expressions that you're sure to hear when you're chatting with your friends from the DR. So again, make sure you click that subscribe button so that you'll be one of the first to be notified when our next episode is available. That is it for this episode of the Dominican Spanish 101 podcast. Gracias por escuchar. Thank you for listening. Hasta la próxima. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com. Salsa.com.